episode number four of The Scout Scientist. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about genetic counselling. So I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, but I feel that not a lot of people really know what it is. And when people get sent out invitations and appointments to come to genetic counselling, um, perhaps they feel a little bit anxious or worried because they don't really know what to expect. Or maybe they feel like, well, I don't really need counselling, so why am I going to this? Well, genetic counselling isn't a form of therapeutic counselling, but they do use counselling skills to guide you through the genetic testing process. So what I've done this week is I've interviewed one of our principal genetic counsellors, Louise Dubois, because obviously she knows a lot more about this than I do. So take a look at this. Hi everyone, I'm here with Louise, who is a principal genetic counsellor, and she is just going to tell us a little bit about her role and the role of genetic counsellors. So, hi Lou, thank hi. you for coming to see me. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role as a genetic counsellor? Yeah, sure. So, um, as you said, I'm Louise, I'm a principal genetic counsellor here at the Loughborough Centre for Genomic Medicine. Um, and I came into genetic counselling through the nursing route. So my background is that I was a paediatric nurse and I worked on the intensive care unit for about eight years. And there I saw children with genetic conditions and the genetic counsellors and the consultants used to come up and see those patients and offer a diagnosis and talk to the families about genetic conditions, which sparked my interest in genetics. Um, I then applied for a training post and uh, worked here for two years before I completed the genetic counsellor registration. Um, so my role here at the moment is that I work directly with patients and families and I talk to them about genetic conditions, how they're inherited and talk about genetic testing and the impact that has on them and their families. So it kind of like genetic counsellors almost bridge the gap between us in the lab and the patients don't they? Because we um, we do all the testing, but then the results will go to you and then you'll explain the results yeah. to, to the patient. Yeah, basically. sure. So we uh, arrange the genetic tests. They go off to you guys in the lab, you do your work, and then we interpret those results to the patients. Okay. And you said that you went into it through nursing, but there's also other routes, isn't there, into becoming a genetic counsellor? So could you just explain a bit more about the other ways to become a genetic counsellor? Yeah, so currently there are three ways that you can get into this profession. The first is the nursing route, which is the route that I took. Yeah. Um, so nurses need to have relevant experience, some counselling experience, and some maybe some genetic science behind that, and they can apply for a trainee post. Uh, secondly, uh, people can choose to do an MSc in genetic counselling and again they can apply for a trainee post yeah. and those two posts uh, when people have completed their trainee post they can uh, submit a portfolio to the genetic counsellor registration board to become a registered genetic counsellor and then more recently we have access to a new route into genetic counselling and it's through the STP or the scientific training programme which I think is what you did. Yeah, it? so it's basically, it's a national programme called the Scientist Training Programme where you can become, um, it gives you entry into loads of different careers. So I obviously did it to become a scientist in genetics, but you can also use that route to become a genetic counsellor. Yeah. Okay, so Lou, you've obviously come across loads of different patients and families during your time as a genetic counsellor. So are you able to share any interesting patient stories with us today? Yeah, sure. So um, I met a family really recently who came to see me. Um, they were pregnant and they've got another child with a life-limiting neuromuscular condition and they wanted to know what the chance was of this pregnancy or this baby having the same condition. Um, and it was a recessively inherited condition so they had a 1 in 4 chance of having a child affected with the same condition. Yes, yeah, so in my last video about Huntington's disease, I talked about dominant inheritance, um, but this recessive inheritance means that instead of just having one copy of the faulty gene in order to get the disorder, you actually need two copies of the gene um, to be faulty in order to get the disorder, but I'll talk about more of the, um, that a little bit more in the next video. 
So uh, this family came to see me because they wanted to have a test in the pregnancy to see if this baby had this condition or not. And traditionally, we would have offered those an invasive test in the pregnancy. So by invasive test, I mean a test where they put a needle into mum's tummy to take either some of the uh, tissue that's forming the placenta or some of the amniotic fluid, which is the fluid around the baby. And then that sample would go off to you guys in the lab for testing. Um, but obviously that sort of invasive test has a miscarriage risk associated with it. So there's a much newer technology now where we can take a blood sample from mum at around eight weeks of the pregnancy and that will tell us if the baby has the condition or not. Oh, okay, so obviously with this type of test, which is MIPT, this is only available for certain genetic conditions, yeah, isn't it? at the moment it's only available for a very limited number of genetic conditions. Okay, but maybe in the future do you think that it might become available for more as we do more and more tests? Yeah, hopefully. That's the sort of vision. And, you know, it's a test that's carried out much earlier in the pregnancy, so couples know about the risk to that pregnancy at a much earlier stage. Um, oh, okay, so that family that you're talking about, so that's what they opted for, and what was the outcome of that test? So they had a good news result. Um, oh. So the baby that they're having is not going to be affected with the same condition as though the child. Oh, perfect. So did you get to tell the patients that result, and did, how, yeah. did, how did that feel for you? Yeah. Oh, it was wonderful, um, really wonderful news to give them. They opted to have the um, results over the telephone, that's purely because we know that we can get the results so much quicker if we telephone them with the results, and they're absolutely delighted. Right, so in genetics, um, there's different types of tests that we can do. So we can do diagnostic testing or predictive testing. So can you explain the difference between the two? Yeah, sure. So diagnostic genetic testing, is when someone presents with symptoms or clinical features of a condition and uh, the doctors looking after them or the geneticists here might do a genetic test to confirm that diagnosis. When we know what that genetic cause of that condition is then we look at the inheritance pattern of that condition and see is it inherited in the family and what is the risk to other family members. We then see the family members um, and who don't have any symptoms of the condition and we will offer them a genetic test to see if they carry that faulty gene or not and that's what's known as predictive genetic testing. Right so predictive is like for family members who are fit and well nothing wrong with them but yeah. we're predicting whether they're going to be affected with this disorder in the future. Yes. Okay right. so that makes yeah. sense and um, so obviously predictive testing needs a lot more counselling and that's when they would come to a genetic counsellor to see whether they want to be tested or not because exactly. some people might not want to know. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of people don't come to see us but those that do, we take them through a process talking about um, the pros and cons of the genetic test and how they'll cope with that result and what the implications of that result will be and how they might share that with family members. Okay, so um, overall we've been talking all a lot about genetic counselling and your role. So, um, what are the pros and cons, would you say, of the job? So, uh, definitely giving the good news results, yeah. like I talked about with the prenatal, giving a good news result to the family is always you know, an amazing feeling for both me and the family. Mm. Um, in terms of cons, I think one of the things that I struggle with is that a lot of people don't know what a genetic counsellor is, um, and either they don't want to come and see us because they think they're coming for counselling, but we're not therapeutic counsellors, we use counselling skills to explain the science and see how families are going to adapt to these results. So that's often a challenge of the job. Um, and we're also a very, very small profession and a new profession, so access to genetic counselling services can be quite difficult. Um, people sometimes struggle to get a referral to us mm -hmm. because people don't know who we are or where we are. Yeah. So. People who are watching this video who might think they like the sound of this and want to get into it, how can they um, get some more skills to help them get into a career like this? What, they, what can they do to get kind of some more experience? So um, if you're not a nurse, um, I, obviously we, we recruit nurses into the genetic counselling profession with counselling or science, science experience. Um, people can do a master's in genetic counselling or they can do some um, counselling courses, maybe some volunteer work, some healthcare work, 
um, or any of the online genetic science courses will also help. Yeah, so all of that will help you just gain some experience in order to get a step in the door to this field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for further information, there is the Association of Genetic Counselors website. And here in Liverpool, we also, also run a genetic counselling taste a day. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much, Lou, for coming and telling us all a bit more about genetic counselling. So hopefully what everyone's learned is that genetic counsellors play a huge role in the patient journey and they really are valuable um, people in, the, in genetics and um, have a huge impact on patients and um, our tests. So um, if anyone wants more information, then please feel free to get in touch or visit the website. I'll put details on my social media later. So hopefully you've learned something new today and perhaps if you've been invited to genetic counselling that I've been able to put you a bit more at ease and you know what to expect now or perhaps I've given you a new idea for a different career in genetics that perhaps you hadn't thought of before. So thank you all so much for watching and as always if you've got any questions then feel free to get in touch um, and if you've liked the video then please do share and comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel.